So last time I talked about the Queen Victoria book, I was just reading passages from it. This time I've decided that I'm going to do something a little bit different and I will instead just read bits and pieces that catch my eye or that I think are interesting. So the first one we have is Breakfast at Half Past Eight, which is translated in the Gaelic as Njit Egle Nuf. So not Nui, but uh, Nu. So it doesn't seem to have the I at the end of it. But what's interesting is that it is half nine, which actually means half past eight. So it is half of nine, which I find pretty interesting. And that pattern continues throughout the book. This may be an old way of saying things, or it may be a dialectal thing. I don't know. I don't have enough information. But I know that that is how it was used in this book. And I may consider adopting it myself. I'm not sure. The next one we have is, without doubt, deer stalking is one of the most interesting of pursuits. So um, I'm not personally a fan of hunting, but I know that some people are. Anyway, that's beside the point. The most important part is the sentence itself, which is translated as, Broken down, it is something like the hunting of the deer in its hunting as laborious or perhaps as freeing as there is. And for that, it is terribly attractive and full of fun, or perhaps full of entertainment or full of interest. So looking at the Gaelic, it seems to diverge somewhat from the original English. And perhaps the author was very keen on hunting, I don't know. The next one is taking the deepest interest in all that concerns them. Going and the whole knee is immigrant day. So we have Agus Goldlach, or in this case, is written Ah Goldlach. Um, I'm guessing her taking an interest or taking interest deep is going. Though um, in East Perthshire, a going would be a gain or dain. Um. In the everything, essentially. So, ans uh, that concerns them is is imagen gay. So, everything which is concerning to them, I suppose. So, imagen day. I think this form, day does show up from time to time in other material I have, but most of the time it is gai or gao. The next one is, but the scene at this beautiful spot was exciting and picturesque in the extreme, which the Gaelic is, van chol or shol, egen spot boyach sho, fuosach luemnyach agus balach jalwadal. So, it should be mentioned that I am using the pronunciation that I know from East Perthshire. So it may differ to the original author's pronunciation. And the writing is more in line with the writing of standard, I suppose, though it does deviate from that from time to time. So in this sentence we have, Van Scholl or Van Joel, I'm not entirely sure, but in this writing it's Van Scholl, so the view, uh, or in this case the scene, the thing that's seen. Uh, Egan Spot, uh, at this spot, Boyachsho, so this beautiful spot. Fuasach, uh, so terribly. Luamnyach, exciting. Exciting, in this case this word is like uh, restless. 
So it kind of in a restless way you are excited. Agus Balach Jalawadal. So and very picturesque, I suppose. Comes from Jalu, which is form or picture. The next one is we did not get back till after three o'clock and then took luncheon. The main part that I wanted to look at was and then we took luncheon, which in this book is Agus and Jen. Roshin and Min La. So, and, and then, and Jen, which is uh, there. Uh, Roshin, we took a Min La, the midday. I found that quite interesting. The next one is where there is a cairn and up which there is a pretty winding path, which in Gaelic is. Farmvel, although probably uh, Farvel. Karn agus fridad lach fir nadrish, or perhaps nadrish. Often, when a sound like ch is then followed by a consonant, it becomes a, for example, d sound. So it goes from being a slender to a broad. And with fiarag. I dropped the ug at the end and just said fiar, which would be more in line with the pronunciation of Perthshire. Farmvel, I think, would just be farvel. I could be wrong though, but but I'm pretty sure that East Perthshire has it as vel, and uh, fridad uh, shows up in East Perthshire Gaelic as fridad. The next one is. Which reminded us very much of the Turinga Wald, I believe, or Turinga Wald, which I believe is a, a German place. And in the Gallic, it is Avatar Turinga Wald Rovord Guad Kuing. And uh, directly, it'd be something like, which was bringing Turinga Wald very much. To our memory, the next sentence is: "The scenery is wild and yet not desolate." Hana shallanen alt ach can ve fasgel. That translation is pretty close. Uh, you have Hana shallanen or shallanen, uh, which is the scenes or the views, I suppose, and then alt is wild, and then. Ach gunvi, so but without being, and then farsachal desolate. The Hana Shalanan Alt Ach gunvi farsachal. The next one is we walked beside the Dee, a beautiful rapid stream which is close behind the house. Goshin sraj taik uskje sru boyach brash. Hastai dlu ed kulu and dai. So there are a few things to break down here. We have roshin sraj, which means um, to uh, take a walk, and then you have uh, taik, which is interesting. In this case, it seems to mean beside, and I've seen it used quite a few times in this book, and then I've not seen it used in other places. It may well be used in other places, and I've just not seen it. But yeah, interesting. And then uskje, uh, which is um, interesting. The uh, water of the J, perhaps, or the D. And then a beautiful so sru boyach, so stream boyach, and then brash for rapid. Which I believe in the nominative would be bras. And then you have hastai uh, delu ed, which is in close. Uh, and then ed kulu, uh, behind, and dai, the house. The next sentence is try his luck with some stags. Which is in Gaelic, 
Regen ri Osten et Begen Gai. So you've got Regen, which is to try, and then ri Osten, try, to, or try his luck, I suppose. So maybe ri a Osten, perhaps. So uh, try to his luck, or try against his luck. Ri has many different uh, 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 meanings. For example, to or against or to be engaged in uh, or to be doing something. So, hamiri mo chrochgan is uh, I'm uh, involved in or doing my chores, if I remember correctly, that is. And then you have ed begin. Gai, which is some in this case. So upon a few stags or st- a little bit of stags. The next one is, we saw from them Harriet's Hospital, a beautiful old building. And in the Gaelic, Honigshin Spijol Harriet Vuop, Shan Togel Voyach. So it's interesting, this word Spijol, which you find up and around the highlands, especially Perthshire, as spittal. And I think it might be linked to the uh, hospitalers or hospitalers. I don't know what the pronunciation is. The, um, the group of, uh, I think, Christian, perhaps they're warriors. I don't really remember very well. Anyway, hospital seems to be translated as spidgel here. And this word, is also found in Irish. Now, whether at the time this word was normal for the word hospital, I don't know. And it's plausible that hospital itself had a different meaning in those days, as is the case with many different words. Now, in East Perthshire Gaelic, hunnic uh, would often just be hon, hon. And uh, vuapa is uh, vuap. In this case, I think when you use it as, uh, for example, an old place, it'll be shan togal. So, and then building isn't toglach, but just togal. The next one is similar to the first one we saw, which is by half past five. And then in the Gaelic, maleshe which is not by, but in this case, about, or I guess around. And then le share is half six, which would be half past five. The next one is a gloom overhung all of us, which is translated as lai duchas orin ul. And I think that's just a darkness or gloom uh, lay upon a soul. And from the same page, he was a link which connected us with bygone times. Vagad kaol rish and chimenen ha shechet. The Gaelic is missing a little here, but uh, in the part that I've highlighted, it is vagad kaol. So, who was at our connection? Uh, to the times that are past, essentially. Vagad, which that guard would be in East Perthshire, Ganad, Ganad. Kyaul, which is a connection, Rish, uh, Nachimanen, so to the times, Hashechet, which are past. The next one is, was especially inquisitive. Agasva balach fodashach. So in this case, it's not fisrachal, or in East Perthshire, you also find fisrach. It is fodashach. And then a common word for very or extremely is balach. The next one is, which stands by itself away from any village. And day shesued le gnval sambi. So, the house, or is the house, Han Dei, 
Shesu edle, standing, alone, gunval, without a town, sambi, uh, at all. And sambi often ends up as sabi in East Perthshire, I believe. The next one is, and I thought they knew us. Agus hulum gnod gad fenach. And again, us in East Perthshire would be ganad fenach. Fenach means to feel or to recognize in East Perthshire. And uh, hulum is, I guess, I thought or I conjectured. And then gnro ad. So they were, and then gad fenach. Recognizing us, or at our recognizing. But it seems they did not. Ach skoltach nach So that's pretty close. Ach, but is koltach, it seems, nach They did not. So they is dropped in this sentence. So Gaelic is slightly more pro drop than English, it seems. And we'll do one more. This one is but not nearly so nice and cheerful, which in the Gaelic is Achanela idad ho uyamal na ho chiral. So, Achanela uh, idad, it is not at all, and then ho, so, uyamal, uyamal. I'm not entirely sure of this word. Um, I'm guessing nice in this case, but it could be also like fitted out or equipped, because that's where I think it comes from, uyamach, uh, or uyamich, to equip. And then na or ho chiral. So uh, chiral in this case, I believe, is cheerful. And then ho is so.